Good morning and welcome to the video for Wednesday, May the 6th for third grade. This is going to cover our homework from our second lesson, uh, working with area and perimeters. So again, in this lesson, we were working um, with recognizing that two different shapes can have the same area but have a different perimeter um, and being able to figure out how we could tell which one would have a larger perimeter or not. Um, so uh, let's finish up number one and then we'll kind of go down the page. So uh, for part B here, we are going to have uh, 4, 8, 10, 12 for the perimeter. And our area is going to match what we had in uh, rectangle A. So that would be 8. And then rectangle B is going to have a larger perimeter. Uh, for number two, we are looking at an area of 12 for both of these. Uh, so 3 times 4 uh, would be the math fact uh, for multiplication for A, and then 2 times 6 for the other one. So uh, we would have 4, 8, 11, 14 uh, for the perimeter of rectangle A. And rectangle B, we would have 6, 12, 14, 16. And so again, rectangle B is going to have a larger perimeter. Again, the farther we move away from having a square and the closer we get to having something that's more of a straight line type of shape, uh, the larger the perimeter is going to be. Uh, number three, uh, we want to compare the areas. Well, the areas are both the same. So if we count, uh, we would have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And 4 times 5 is also going to give us 20. So they are equal, and they are both 20. Um, compare the perimeters. Um, well, this one is going to end up having a longer uh, or greater perimeter. So our perimeter for this one uh, would be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20, 24 for A. And that would have uh, be 24. And then our other one would be uh, 5, 10, 14, 18. Uh, number five, draw two rectangles with different perimeters. Uh, I'm not as worried about drawing something. What's usually going to happen is you're going to end up drawing something. It's better to do it on a type of paper that you already have this kind of grid available to you um, to do that. Um, but I normally draw something that looks exactly like this. I might just rotate it slightly. So I would draw one that's closer to a square and one that's closer to being a straight line or something like you would find on the back. So I'm not going to take the time to uh, draw an extra thing for that. Um, as long as you made two different rectangles and they both have the same area and they both have different perimeters, you win. So number one on the back, um, this is supposed to be over here. I don't know why um, they wrote A and B next to each other uh, on the computer version of this. Uh, so B should be over here. Uh, which rectangle has the greater perimeter? That should be rectangle B. Um, which rectangle has the greater perimeter? Again, it's going to be the one that is closer to being a straight line. Uh, so that would be A. Now this one's a little bit closer um, so to give you an example, we'd have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19, 20, 22, uh, compared to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, 15, 18. So there's only a difference of 4, uh, 22 for the perimeter, and 18 for the perimeter. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at... Um, this one. So I mentioned in the lesson video that this is going to be the part that we have to do first. If we get the wrong answer, it's because we tried to do 8 minus 3 before we multiplied. So the correct answer should be end up being 8 minus the answer to 3 times 2, which is 6. So 8 minus 6 would give us 2. And number 4, um, our fraction would be 3 fourths. Again, working on the number line, one-fourths, two-fourths, three-fourths, and then four-fourths or our whole. Uh, number five, we have uh, three line segments. And so one of the things uh, when I was uh, relaying this is if we have the same numerator, the same number on the top, which tells us how many parts we're counting, um, the larger the number is, 
on the denominator, um, the smaller the piece is going to be. And so if I were to draw this, let's say that I can actually um, get three of these to actually look right. It's really hard to draw with my mouse because it's so large. Um, so if I make a two-fourths by doing this, and then a two-thirds by doing this, and a two-sixths by doing something similar to what I did for the two-thirds, but I add extra pieces in, uh, what we are going to find is this is going to be the part that's shaded in for 2 sixths. That is going to be the smallest amount shaded in. The next largest amount would be 2 fourths. And then the largest amount would be 2 thirds. So in order from least to greatest, it would be 2 sixths, 2 fourths, 2 thirds. And so again, the smaller this number is, the larger the piece. Um, and so we would have a larger amount of the total shape that we're counting if we're only dividing it into three pieces compared to four or six pieces. Uh, number six, uh, three-eighths of an inch of snow fell on Monday, five-eighths fell on Tuesday. Comparing the two, um, what we could do is we could say um, three-eighths is less than five-eighths. So if we were writing an inequality statement, uh, we could do that. Or we could say that 5 eighths is greater than 3 eighths. Um, so that would be an option for what you could do for that. So hope that helps with the homework questions. If you have uh, any additional questions, uh, Risen Christ students, please ask in Google Classroom. Uh, if you are finding our videos from uh, a Google search uh, or through YouTube uh, on, a, on a different uh way, uh, go ahead and ask your classroom teacher for any additional help, and I'm sure they'll be happy to help you. So hope you have a great day. I will have a new lesson coming out tomorrow, which will be Thursday. So have a good day, and I will see you tomorrow.